Hi everyone, my name is Terence Lim and I'm a developer evangelist from Salesforce. And in today's video, I'll be covering the topic on inside a React Native mobile app with Salesforce data. But with the rise in the demand for mobile app development today, customers are seeking world-class mobile apps and experiences to solve business problems with customer data. I'll be discussing how I've developed a React Native mobile app and address some of the technical components behind the scenes with a focus on how the app can easily interact with Salesforce objects and data via Heroku. Right, so the mobile app demo, which I've titled Eureka Retail, aims to showcase a simple retail use case called clienteling. This is a process where in-store sales associates identify their most loyal customers and their preferences so they can provide a more targeted service and to improve sales. Now, let me show you a quick walkthrough of the mobile app that I put together. Note that this is kind of continuously work in progress and any pull requests on GitHub and any collaborations to contribute would be much appreciated. So key features of the mobile app include the home screen, which provides a dashboard view of the store and the associate's performance, the profile screen, which is centered around the associate profile, and I think most importantly, a customer screen which enables store associates to access data and insights regarding their loyal customers and the data that's residing on Salesforce. So you browse through the code, you will see the screen's name respectively. And as the app is built, the exciting part comes in as we bring the app to life with Salesforce. So the first to do is, how do we incorporate the customer data, which the Salesforce platform is awesome at, into the mobile application that we have built? And here, we have some customer data in the Salesforce org, as you see here. And for the purpose of this demo, I've created a custom object called Eureka Customers to demonstrate this use case. And note that in production, it will be recommended to use the standard objects in Salesforce, such as account or even contact to represent customers' data. All right, so now let's discuss you know, how we can expose this data securely to the Eureka mobile app. And let me share with you the high-level architecture on how that's done. So first of all, as you see on this diagram, right, number one, we have Heru Connect. So Heru Connect allows the synchronization of data two ways between the Salesforce org, typically within the um, Eureka Customers custom object, which I've used here, and the Heroku Postgres database. And then secondly, we have the Heroku app, which is actually an Express.js app, which serves as an API interface for interacting with the data in the Heroku Postgres database. And finally, we have the Axios library um, that I've actually put into my mobile app that it typically used to send and retrieve data from the Heroku Postgres database via the Heroku app. All right, so this is the um, code for um, the React Native app. All right, so on the right-hand side of the screen here, you see an emulator that's kind of running live you know, from the app. On the left-hand side of the screen here, this is Visual Studio Code. And you can see also the uh, entire explorer that shows the paths to all the different code and, and files that I have here. Um, so, you know, there are a couple of screens that it's pretty important, right? The home screen, which corresponds to the home page. You can see on the home screen here and all the necessary code is, is also uh, available here. Right, the great thing about using um, this uh, React Native is that, you know, whatever code I change appears live on the uh, app, as you can see on the right-hand side. So, for example, right, let's say if I want to change the word team dashboard, to something else, let's say I'm gonna call it like, you know, um, Eureka Dashboard, if I save it, automatically updates live. So this is really one of the amazing features of uh, React Native here, right? So um, we also have other screens, like, you know, we have the customer screens, which corresponds to the customer screen over here that you see on the uh, emulator, right? So let's take a quick look at, you know, how this data is uh, being accessed. Right over here, this actually loads the um, customer data that you see live on the uh, Salesforce org. So what I've done here is actually I've imported the um, Axios library, right? So um, I've actually created a, a file called X, uh, Axios config, and this provides the configuration that uh, points the um, API URL, to the um, Node.js application, right? And I also provided some very basic, simple authentication here just for a demo purpose. And within the um, customer screen, right? After I've imported the Axios configuration, uh, I've also imported the Axios library, right? I'm able to then uh, eventually call the uh, fetch customer uh, method, right? Using the configuration that I've actually imported from the uh, settings file here. And once I've got that, I'm able to um, actually fetch the state of 
the entire customer list, right? I'm able to use the uh, use states to update the state of the uh, screen so that it knows that, hey, now I've got the list of the, all my customers and I'm able to then proceed to list it all over here using a flat list, right? So let's say if I were to uh, click into any of this here, right, this actually takes me to the uh, customer details screen. So I'm able to like, you know, likewise load the customer details screen here. I'm also calling the same um, Excel um, library, the same configuration. And I'm able to then say, hey, you know, I want to uh, load the customer state um, and all its fields respectively. So that's where I have actually done to load the um, data from, um, from Salesforce itself directly. So and the other part where I think it becomes interesting is how do we actually update the customer data, right? So over here, if you go under the customer update screen, right, this is where um, very similarly using the Excel library, right, I'm able to actually call and update to the customer object. So as I handle the submit, you can see that I'm actually calling a post uh, method. What I've done here is that I'm actually updating the uh, customer um, data uh, via a post method to the Node.js application that's sitting on Heroku. And once that's done, I've actually provided an alert. So let's say if I make some changes here, I'm gonna change the last number to nine. I do update customer details and uh, you actually see the, the pop-up showing up, right? Showing that it has been updated and the number gets updated. Right, so if I were to go back into my Salesforce org, you can see this was the old number. And if I refresh the page, um, you will see that the uh, Vivex profile has been updated live as well. Right, and similarly, this also can be done two ways. So like, let's say if I go to another profile, let's go to Ian's uh, profile here. So let's say that, hey, you know, in this case here, Ian's email might be incorrect. Instead of .com.sg, I want to change that to something else. I can say, hey, you know what? It could be just .com.in as an example to, to change to Indonesia. Once I save that, right, this actually gets replicated to um, Postgres database. And I'm able to just you know, refresh the page and you can see that Ian's profile is now updated directly live on the app. Right, so you can see it's almost an instantaneous update, which is really awesome. All right, so over here, I'm gonna jump into the Heroku demo. And uh, this is the Ubica mobile demo app that I've created. And this is what actually hosts the uh, Express.js, or rather the Node.js app that, that acts as the interface uh, for the API layer. Um, so I'm gonna show you quickly how I actually replicate the data um, you know, from the Salesforce org to the um, Heroku itself. So this is done actually using Heroku Connect, right? So as you can see, I can go into resources. Um, I go into Heroku Connect, okay. And what it actually does is that, you know, I can actually very easily create a mapping, right? So actually what I'm doing here is I'm actually replicating the account um, data and also the Eureka customers custom object that I've created within my um, Salesforce demo org, right? It actually replicates bi-directionally both ways, all the customer data as you can see here. So all the fields you can easily select and say, hey, I want to synchronize all these fields, right? Directly from Salesforce org and, and vice versa to the database. All right, so um, now I'm gonna quickly talk about the Eureka Express JS app. So as I said earlier, right, this is actually a very simple app, just importing the libraries for Express. And you can see here that I actually created a very simple um, function to check the credentials to make sure that, hey, whichever app that is trying to access the API has some form of authentication. And then this is where the magic happens, right? Where I can say, hey, I'm creating a simple get API endpoint. And with a slash customer endpoint, I'm able to just basically um, do a simple query. Right, so this query actually is being done on the Postgres database, which actually replicates the data from the um, Salesforce org. And um, of course, it's not um, just one endpoint I can create. I can also create multiple routes. In this case here, I can say, hey, I want to also query, you know, um, using a user ID. And it will actually allow me to just search for and return the um, customer data for the particular ID. And, um, you know, finally, we have the um, post method as well that's also available. So I'm able to allow my application to update the data within the database and eventually also updates the data um, in the Salesforce org. So this is where using the post method after the authentication, I'm able to call an update to set the new data right coming from the app itself so that you can update the Postgres database and subsequently the, um, the data that's sitting in the Salesforce org. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I've now come to the end of this video and I hope that this has been useful to many of you. 
especially if you're looking to build a custom native mobile app and utilizing the power of the Salesforce platform to connect your customers' data securely and at scale. Before you go, I'd like to invite all of you to click like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you and see you next time.